Real quick, uh, what Suni and I wanted to do is uh, give you a little bit of a lunchtime uh, treat on uh, networking. And we've abbreviated the uh, presentation um, because we're, we're a little bit behind schedule. Uh, but nevertheless, we think it'll be uh, certainly worth your time. One of the things that we really want you to embrace um, is this ability uh, to network and do it effectively. And we want you to understand, uh, first and foremost, um, that networking is not so much, and you've heard this over and over again this morning, what you take out of meetings like this. It's more about what you put in. And I think the best quick example I could give you is uh, the young lady, uh, Whitney, uh, from Chicago State, uh, knows that I'm an alumni. And she said to me uh, last night at the reception, I can't believe you're an alumni and I've never heard of you and you haven't been back to our campus. I need to connect you with our campus so that we can get more people involved and interested in IOBSC so we can create additional opportunities. So she wasn't networking with me for her benefit. She was networking with me for the benefit of other students. That's a young lady I will never forget. Um, as a matter of fact, I want your resume before we leave here. <laughs> because those are the type of people I love being around. It's not about them. And as you think about networking in this presentation, the name of the book is called Never Eat Alone. It's written by uh, Keith Parazzi. I actually have a couple of copies we'll give out um, at the end. Um, but what struck me about this particular networking book was it wasn't so much about what he took out of his network, it was what he put in. And by putting in to the network and giving of yourself, you ultimately receive more than you could ever ask for. So something to think about. All right. Well, we're going to see if we can breeze through this um, so that you get the benefit of what we intended. Uh, number one, uh, networking is really about access to resources, opportunities, friendships, helping others, um, having the ability to just share uh, your talents in a number of different ways, and people kind of misread it. They only think it's about, you know, having access to jobs, um, and it's much more than that. So this is a quote that we enjoy um, wanting to utilize it, but the more people you help, the more help you'll have, and the more help you'll have helping others. So what does that mean? Um, Long and short of it is, we talked a little bit about this, I, I, and I'm going to give an example, and I'm going to use Justice as an example who spoke earlier. Um, you know, last night at the Mixer, he did a great example of a networking maneuver, which was uh, he came up, he introduced himself. I had already kind of heard of him, had an opportunity to um, speak to him up front, and he shared his thoughts on some of the things that we could do with our ILBSC website to make it connect with young people. And I challenged him and said, you know, great, I love those thoughts. If you could put together what you're would a plan around that, would love to entertain the possibility of you helping with that. Part two of that is today, uh, he said, well, there's another person that I know in this group that's really good at this kind of thing. Do you mind if I include her so we can do it together as a partnership? So not only did he network his way into an opportunity, but he then used the opportunity that he gained to gain access for somebody else. And that's the essence of the thought process. It's the essence of the foundation of the organization, which is this concept that says that I gain, but in gaining, I gain by giving first. And, and truly, it's, I know we say it, it sounds artificial, maybe insincere, but it's true. If you give, you will receive. And it's a great example of where one young gentleman took an opportunity for himself and shared that opportunity with somebody else. So now two people are going to get the benefit. And oh, by the way, our, you know, the plan is to pay them to help uh, modify the website. So great example of where helping others will help yourself. So one of the things that we talk about, um, and one of the things that I think came up in the student training, but this is true for practitioners, it's true for uh, people in the industry, and it's particularly true for young people coming in, is doing your homework um, and understanding how you utilize that homework to help set you up. So the concept that Keith Ferrazzi uh, talks about is this concept that you know, don't eat, don't eat alone. What does that mean? What it means is at no time in a social gathering such as this should you lose sight of the opportunity to engage people. And one of the mistakes you can make is utilize that time to engage just 
the people you want to utilize to get a job, maybe myself, maybe Keith, whatever. But one of the most connections you make is the connections you make among yourselves. But one of the other things that um, he talks about is this concept of doing your homework. For example, if I'm going to go to an IOBSC conference, it's probably a good idea for me to do some homework on IOBSC. And today, the ability to be able to do this is pretty effective in terms of the internet, in terms of mutual acquaintances. So for example, on campus, what other campuses um, what other students on your campus have already been at a conference, and maybe they can utilize that as you're meeting and interacting what worked for you. Some of the people in the room, you've heard some great success stories of students that were here that are now alumni, that have been here now two or three or four years, are now in the workforce. Those are great resources for you. Don't think your network is just about the senior executive in the company. Build that network all the way up. Um, don't be afraid. So a, spe a spectacular achievement is always preceded by spectacular preparation. So um, it's important to understand that if you don't do your homework, you're missing out. So for example, if it were me and I were a student coming here, I'd spend time to ensure that I understood Sears, since I know I'd take a look at some of the sponsors. I'd take the time to say, well, what's ADT about? What do they do? What are the opportunities there? I'd know every company that I was going to be meeting with. And in addition to that, I'd understand the executives that are coming to the organization. So doing your homework before conference, doing your homework while you're at a conference, and then when you leave, taking the opportunity to say, you know, Mr. Titus, I did a little bit of research on you after I met with you. Here are some thoughts on some things that I heard about you, or I looked into the LP Research Council. Here are my thoughts. One thing I, I would like to add to that is I think, it, I think Charles Dickens uh, said it best, the best impromptu speech he ever gave took him two weeks to prepare for, okay? And that means there's no such thing as a chance encounter. Um, it's all about preparation. Uh, as you, I'm sure, heard, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So as Suni said, homework is uh, absolutely key. The next thing I really want to emphasize is that your network is not just filled, you hope, I guess, um, with people like you know, Mr. Logan or Mr. Wainwright or SUNY or myself or some of the other uh, speakers that you've seen. Um, your network, your most powerful network, believe it or not, is people sitting at your table right now. You have no idea who they're connected to. You have no idea um, what their talents are and how they can support you in one way or another. And a lot of times at conferences like these, you have attendees who are so focused on one particular individual or maybe two or three particular individuals when in fact the person they're sitting next to probably could give them more help than they ever dreamed of. So I want you to make sure that your network as you resource includes people like friends and relatives and colleagues um, neighbors, alumni, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's just not, you know, those key people that you think um, ultimately open doors. Um, it, it's just not, it doesn't work that way. Keith, let me just add to that. I've gotten more opportunities in the industry from my peer group than I've gotten from those that were senior to me. I've even gotten opportunities from people that had worked for me, went to another company. Great example, I worked for BCBG. I'd go on to be vice president for BCBG. And that job, my first vice president job, came when an employee that used to work with me at Polo went over there, got over there, that position opened up, and she told the supervisor team, you should take a look at my old boss from another company. So think about that, right? Somebody who used to be on my team was the one who was advocating for me in another place. So sometimes you underestimate your peer group and your network and the value that they give you in an organization. You, many a times we get calls and I say, well, I, that's not a job that I'm interested in, but I give it to a peer or vice versa. They give it to me, give you an opportunity. This is the number one way people get jobs. And yet most people think, well, it's by knowing that senior executive. Actually, it's your peer group. So as you all move up together, as you all, and this is true in the industry, as you move up together, you will start to help each other be successful. And that's the essence of what this organization is about. So one of the things that um, Keith talks about in his book, Keith Farazi, is that this concept that break time is not break time. He actually uses that phrase, which is this concept that um, you're always engaged in networking 
all the time. But, but one of the things that we talked about last night, if you go back to Mike Robbins' presentation, you're doing it, and we're going to speak to this briefly, in an authentic way. So that means that it's times like this, it's times when you're interacting, that's why we put this presentation at this time frame. Because these are the great times, the down times, that seem like the time when you should be like, oh, I'm going to relax. That's actually not the time to relax. That's the time to build those relationships. That's the time to engage, because this is the most informal opportunity to make a formal connection that will help you. And again, it's about what can you do to that relationship? What can you contribute to that relationship, hopefully with the benefit down the line?